guys might remember this garage me freezing to death back in December anyway this thing's got a wheel hub howling I put a new one on this side about I don't know two months ago done it over across the street in my friend's garage I think now we got this one going bad anyway I'm gonna jack it up and see if I can feel anything I don't know if you guys can see this or not but watch Got about a sixteenth inch of movement there. If you rolled it around with the brake caliper off, you might be able to hear something also. You can hear something now, but you don't know if it's the brake caliper or the wheel bearing. But I hate these hubs. If you live in a place like Illinois where they use salt on the road, these things will not come off. I usually have to heat them and then beat the hell out of them with a slide hammer. Uh, I change a lot of these. Never used to have trouble with tapered bearings. I wish they'd go back to that because last three or four cars I've had, I've been replacing hubs continuously. Yeah, this one's definitely got play in it and it sounded to me like it was coming from here. So we're gonna pull this off and See how bad it's froze on there today. There's two wheel hubs that I've taken off something. Like I say, guys, I've been replacing these things continuously. Got the wheel off. Next step is to take the caliper off. There's two bolts back here, 13 millimeter. Should be able to pry this off there now. see what they look like look pretty good I think now we gotta get the caliper mounting bracket off and then there's one screw right here that needs to come out I believe it's t27 Torx I'll let you know for sure here in a minute okay guys two bolts that hold the caliper on they're uh, 18 millimeter put a wrench on there the head of it's angled so it's kind of angled out towards me easiest way I've found to break these loose is to uh, get your wrench on there and then smack the wrench with a hammer. Okay, now we got the caliper off and the caliper mounting bracket off. You can spin this and listen. You hear that dry bearing sound? That'll kind of sound like a 747 airplane going down the road. So, uh, now we got to get this screw out. This is T27 Torx. I'm actually surprised it's coming out of there that easy. Many times they don't. I've had to drill them out before. They're not all that important. Uh, you really don't even have to put them back in. I've been told they're there to uh, keep the brake rotors on as the car's going down the assembly line during manufacturing. Um, anyway, if you don't get it back in there, it's not the end of the world. I put them back in when I can. But it's also not a bad idea to put some anti-seize on them going back together.
rotor looks good. It's not grooved up. All right, now I gotta get the hub bolts out. I'm getting this one with a ratchet. The last one of these I did was a month or two ago and I don't remember exactly, but I think there's at least one of these you gotta do with a wrench. But I'll let you know here in a minute. Okay guys, three bolts come through from the back in a triangle configuration. One here, one here, one down there. This one's easy to get out with just a uh, ratchet 18 millimeter socket this one you can start like that and get it broke loose at the very end you need an 18 inch 18 millimeter wrench to get out the last bit of it because your ratchet head wants to get caught up back there but you can break it loose with a ratchet and then take the wrench to it and get out the last little bit the bottom one what i did there i dropped a shock on the bottom because it's in the way after you do that which is 21 millimeter, then this one can be gotten with just a ratchet and an 18 millimeter socket also. So this is all ready to come off. This is where I always run into problems. Here in Illinois, these will freeze up in there. This is metal. The, the, uh, the knuckle back there is aluminum and they will freeze in there and will not come out. I've had to heat them with torches, take slide hammers, and just beat on them for hours to get them out. You'll eventually get them, but a lot of times you need that heat, and that aluminum doesn't heat very well, but you'll eventually get it, but boy, sometimes you gotta fight them. I suppose if you live in you know, a better climate where they're not using road salt and stuff, it's not a big deal, but <laughs> you watch a YouTube video of those guys making it look easy, it's generally not here in Illinois. But anyway, we'll try to pull this off right now and see what happens. Hey, I almost forgot to tell you, there's also uh, your wheel sensor up on top. Uh, you're also gonna wanna take that out. I think it has to come out. Anyway, I always take them out. So uh, I'll get you back in here and show you that real quick. All right, 10 millimeter guys, right there. And uh, don't break that, you need it. I'm not kidding you guys, that's the easiest one I've taken off probably in the last two years. I've usually had to fight with these and fight with them. You pull them off and there'll still be a 16th of an inch of aluminum froze all the way around this that pulls out with it. But uh, man, we got lucky here guys. Normally here I'd be taking a wire wheel or some sandpaper and cleaning this up, but I just test fit the new one and it's it's sliding right in there, so we're not gonna do that. We gotta get our dust shield position back on there and then we'll position a new hub on. It's not directional in any way, so uh, just get your holes lined up. Okay, I got this all bolted on with the three bolts and it's torqued down to the proper torque settings. So uh, now we gotta attach this top brace here in the shock mount. And then uh, I'll get you back in here in a minute, guys. All right, guys, we got our new hub in. I got that all torqued down to specs. Upper control arms hooked back up and the, the shock bolt is back in. We got our wheel sensor back in. So we're down to putting the brakes back on. And uh, first thing that's gonna happen there is gonna be the rotor. We'll go ahead and line that hole up with um, with the threads there so we can put that 
little 27 Torx head screw back in. I'm gonna, I don't think I have any anti-seize here. I'm just gonna put a little lightweight waterproof grease on the threads. Might make it a little uh, more likely to come out next time. I don't know the exact torque specs on this. If you're doing this, you might wanna look it up so you can set your torque wrench and torque all this down properly. I do so many of these that I pretty well know when tight's tight. But uh, this is gonna be like one of those, you know, like uh, do as I say, not as I do things. Go get yourself a torque wrench and, and look it up on the interweb. But uh, in order to get this off, I dropped, I dropped a lower shock mount in the upper control arm. And then uh, this was an eight pound slide hammer I was using. If you live in a rust belt state, you're gonna probably want that. This one probably would have come off by just tapping it with a hammer. It came off much easier than most of them I've done here lately, but uh, don't always expect that. I was uh, I was prepared to show you something really difficult here. But uh, anyway, let me button this up now. On these, uh, on these inner caliper brackets, you wanna make sure that these are sliding easy. These have gotta be able to move or you're gonna grind, grind up your brake pads. So always check those. If they're not working like these are, get new ones in there so it's going back together. And uh, I might go ahead and just put a little grease in these two slots right here where the brake pads go in. I just use some of this lightweight pr plumber's grease on this uh, screw here. Uh, I'm gonna put a little grease on these as well and then we'll get this back on there. Just right in these grooves right here where your brake pads slide. Those get kind of crusty. Put it in there and move them around a little. Don't get any grease on your brake pads though. You don't want that. guys I got that on there see how everything's free and moving nothing's stuck anywhere that's what you want this has got to be able to float so uh, just make sure all that's movable I'm gonna get the screws back in here Those were 18, 18 millimeter. All right, guys, that's all back on there. Take our caliper. 
Hopefully it still goes on. Oh, we got lucky. All right, guys. Get the two bolts back in there. They're going to be right here. It knows we're 13 millimeter to get them lined up and tightened up. That's on. So, we should. This should be about together, guys. I think we can tighten up our little torque screw here. You ready to put the wheel back on? Taking this for a test drive. Let's see if it seems quieter. So far, so good. Get it out here on the highway so we can Get a little speed coming out of it you know that hub i took off wasn't froze in there very bad and it still had paint on it makes me think i've probably replaced it before i lose track i i really 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 wish they hadn't went with hubs with sealed bearings in them the old tapered greasable bearings were just so much more reliable at least for me We got her up to 60. Sounds pretty good. I'd say we got it fixed. Anyway, later guys. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, subscribe. Hope this video helps somebody out. Um, anyway, catch you later.